Rice, due to its wide and easy availability, is a staple for a majority of the world's population. This was confirmed by my survey where most of the respondents said that they eat rice at least once a week. However, it is this large availability of rice that makes its origin hard to pinpoint. This is because different varieties have different genetic stocks making it harder to trace. We also know that rice was first domesticated in China's Pearl River Valley. Its spread followed the path of colonization. It is believed that when Alexander the Great invaded India, he took this crop with him. However, limited knowledge about this crop encouraged these great power to bring slaves from Africa for the cultivation of this crop. In this sense, rice is believed to be one of the earliest contributors to slavery. This is not the only way in which rice contributed to class differences. In China, black rice was known as the emperor's rice because the emperor wanted to reserve this grain for himself due to its unique color. However, many of these symbolic associations with rice still continue till this day. Rice is seen as a symbol of fertility. This is because the growth of rice requires fertile soil. This led to rice being associated with goddess Lakshmi in India, who is the goddess of fertility and informed its use in festivals such as Vadai, where the bride throws grains of rice. It is believed that it brings her good luck and fertility and is also seen as a way of thanking her parents for feeding her throughout her life. This was also confirmed by my survey, where most of the respondents said that they continue to use rice for religious purposes and have positive associations with rice. This leads me to infer that rice continues to be a very important part of our societal and religious culture. However, not all associations with rice are correct. In my survey, many of the respondents said that they have heard myths about rice, the most common one being that rice makes you fat. This can be traced back to China, where people used to eat rice porridges in order to make them fat, because fatness was desirable and being fat was seen as a symbol that you came from a family that could feed you. This led people to associate rice with fatness, even though there is no scientific evidence for the same. This leads me to infer that many of these myths in our society prevail due to the traditional belief, even though they have no scientific basis. Talking about science, science affected the cultivation of rice in many ways. In the past, growing rice was a very difficult process due to its high moisture requirement and high failure rates. However, with scientific and technological advancements such as HIV seeds and fertilizers, we have been able to curb the effect of natural environment, leading me to believe that with the scientific development, the relative influence of natural phenomenon is reduced. The production of rice, however, is still a very complex and long process. Rice is one of the few plants that are transplanted. Now, the need for transplantation emerges from the anatomy of rice. 90% of rice's body structure is made with leaf. Having more leaf area makes it more susceptible to precipitation and thus increases its moisture requirement. Rice also has fibrous roots which spread wide. This increases the need for proper spacing in order to ensure effective growth of the crop. Rice in India is grown during the Kharif season which starts in October and ends in April and the entire process of rice cultivation takes anywhere from 4 to 5 months. However, certain steps may vary as per the variety of rice used. Rice has more than 2400 varieties and I focused on 4 of them including white rice, broken rice, red rice and black rice. During my study, I was able to understand that white rice, despite being the least healthy, is the most commonly used due to its better texture, taste, easy chewness, easy to cook, digestion, affordability and wide availability. This was also confirmed by my survey. In comparison, red rice, which is red in color due to a chemical called athonine and black rice, have extremely high level of antioxidants and minerals. However, these are expensive, difficult to procure and cook. This was confirmed during my cooking experiment where white rice took 15 minutes to cook while red and black rice took more than 40 minutes. They were sticky, difficult to handle and not to mention that the pigments in black rice were so strong that they stained everything they touched. Considering these factors, I think it's understandable why someone would choose white rice over these variety considering the relative advantages and disadvantages of both. Another difference between these varieties arises from their starch content, which informs their structure and stickiness. This was confirmed by a starch experiment. 
both broken rice and white rice have a lot of surface starch which they leach easily thus when iodine was added to them it turned a dark blue indicating medium starch content red and black rice on the other hand turned the iodine black indicating a very high starch content differences in these varieties gives rise to many different cooking methods as well as by products i was able to understand that most of the by products of rice emerge from the human need to utilize the maximum of what they have however not all about rice is good Rice is currently the most polluting crop that is cultivated due to the high levels of irrigation and pesticides that are required for its growth. However, considering the growing need for this crop due to the growing population, it is unlikely that we can expect any change from the agricultural sector in the coming few years. In the end, each grain of rice has its own texture, which can be like a silky bed sheet or an unpolished wood. its own shape reminding me of tall and short buildings its own color which is deep and rich like a brick wall or dull like a whitewashed one its geometry reminding me of chandeliers every grain is different no two grains are the same and that is what makes this grain so unique